Well, hello, neighbors. Welcome. Welcome to Built to Connect with Karen Bryant. I am Karen Bryant, and I am really pleased to be with you this evening. Now, we've got a really fun guest for you today and uh, great content as usual that I think you will love and enjoy. So on Built to Connect, this is a space where we have conversations about community, communities that matter. And what we know about community is that it's a place that draws you in. It wraps its arms around you. It invites you to identify, develop, and share your gifts. Community cheers you forward as you do these things. And oftentimes, it's the communities that we're a part of that can either make or break us. But you know what's important. You've heard that saying that, you know, uh, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. You know, communities only work because you are a part of it. And so as much as we receive from community, there are gifts and talents and actions and energy that we must as individuals give to community as well to make things work. And so I think you're gonna find that to be one of the themes that we talk about today um, with my next guest. So I'm gonna bring our guest on. There he is. Welcome. Hey, hey Miss Bryant. Welcome. I don't know if you heard a part of that opening there. I think you did hear part of that opening that, um, you know, um, you know, community gives um, and we can receive from community, but uh, each of us have a part to play in community as well in giving to it. I, I know that's going to be part of our conversation. Yeah. How are you doing tonight, Mr. Stevenson? That was good. That was good. That was good. I heard you say that. You heard that? Look at you. you, you're reading stuff, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm doing well, my sister. How you doing? Yeah. No, it's great. And I see that one of our uh, viewers, hey there, Miss Lloyd, uh, asked to be playing to match colors. And it's hilarious. There's a funny story behind this because uh, if you go yes. look, we did a promo about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> a mic check promo and it seems there has been a wardrobe change not yes. on my part <laughs> yes i had to change because the camera's inverted so i, I had the word shift so it's like <laughs> it's you know it, it just didn't look right <laughs> so i had to change loiter <laughs> that's hilarious because i was going to mention that if, if you didn't i was going to mention that uh, yeah. myself so that was pretty cool well listen let me let me read um i, want, I have a uh, your bio here i want to read a bit of your bio so that our viewers know <laughs> who they have um you know what they have in store for them tonight so you are john stevenson um and uh, we, we are longtime friends full disclosure we've been uh friends for many years uh but john stevenson is a pastor a radio personality an author, a life mentor, speaker, and social activist. Uh, he believes that every person can reach a place of self-empowerment with renewed thinking um, in five areas, five areas that form the foundations of our lives. And those areas are relationships, education, finances, health, and spirituality. So all each of those five areas. Um, exciting and life-changing, John's teachings on leadership, family, Serving and faith have given him the opportunity to share with an ever broadening um, audience. And he has fulfilled speaking engagements at a variety of churches, conferences, universities, community functions, and on um, uh, various podcast, podcast platforms. Um, he is the executive producer and host of the Vision for Change radio show, which aired on Radio One's WYCB and WOL in the Washington, D.C. area, and you may have caught him on that platform as well. Um, and that has now been transformed into a podcast. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, who, who is that guy you're introducing? <laughs> <laughs> that I, is I, you. I, I, I want to meet that guy. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, and, um, you know, I will, I will share this part because I think um, many 
uh, many of your friends and family and followers um, who have been with you across the years may not know or have been recently introduced to this last part um, of your bio that I want to share right now. Mm -hmm. And it's that social activist part, right? Yeah. And um, you actually have been very active um, in the area of police reform. And because that, um, you have gained um, invitations to speak um, at community protests at, um, on, and on these different podcasts on the topic of racial injustice and police reform. And currently, you're actually part of a community, the, the Montgomery County Citizens a uh, Academy. Um, and a panelist with local community activists where you folks talk about, I believe, all things, uh, sort of the, the, um, uh, the communities of uh, the police community with the, the actual community, right? Mm -hmm. And the things that happen at that intersection. Mm -hmm. And I believe that um, that group is called PACT, Police and Community Together. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And, and that group was specifically... Uh, formed to improve relationships between the local police department and the African American community in Montgomery County, Maryland. So, you know, a big mouthful, and I will I'll, I'll end the bio before you oh, fall out by saying that um, John and his wife Karen is the president CEO of the Inspire Minds Consulting Corporation. And hopefully, in the course of our conversation, um, you know, we can uh, hear some more about that. So, yeah. welcome, John Stevenson. Welcome, neighbor. Well, thank you, Kim. Well, Miss Bryant, it's such a, you see, we can't be serious. You know, thank you, Miss Bryant, for having me <laughs> on the uh, platform here. It's so, such an honor for me to be here with you and your uh, wonderful, wonderful audience. See, that doesn't even sound sincere, does it? <laughs> it is, though. I am grateful. Seriously, I, I am so, um, when you asked me to do this, my heart was full of joy. I was so excited about, oh, my God, I get a chance to talk with her live with people watching us. That's Cool. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, I appreciate your enthusiasm. And um, I have a bunch of great neighbors who join us here biweekly. The, the show comes on roughly biweekly. And um, we've really explored some pretty important, um, uh, you know, aspects of community. And I, I know for a fact that we've made some connection and changed some lives um, here on this platform, which makes me excited, you know, um, because I really believe in people, you know, uh, People are important. I believe in people first policies and approaches to, um, mm. to you know, institutions and society and that sort of thing. And if the institutions that are built to serve people don't actually do that, well, there's a problem with that, you know. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that people feel empowered to uh, occupy the spaces that belong to them and feel free to show up as their authentic selves. Mm -hmm. And um, this is just my, this is my corner of the world as, as I'm trying to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm really thrilled to have you there. And uh, again, welcome to all the neighbors who are, who are joining us. So um, we want to talk. So those of you who join us um, for the program, you know that the goal of Built to Connect is really to highlight the concept of community and to help people understand the power of community and how community can heal, it can transform and empower. And so no better guest than, than uh, John Stevenson today who's got um, really a lot to share. So John, tell us about the community that you serve. Who are they and what connects them as a group? Oh my goodness, I serve many communities. The first community is my household. <laughs> I am a father, I'm a husband, a father, and uh, as recent, a grandfather. And that is the very first community that I serve before I do anything else. Um, my family definitely comes first, um, and they know it. You know, anytime I'm anywhere, I learned years ago, no matter what you're doing, where you are, if that phone rings as one of your family members, you pick it up, you know, because, you know, I, I treat my wife right because when I get old, and um, I'm going to need her to feed me that oatmeal. I need her to blow it first. <laughs> All them years you didn't pick up a and stick it up. So uh, my wife and my, my children and my grandbabies, oh, my goodness. You know, I heard my mom say years ago um, just about being a grandmother. It's just, just a different feel. And so now, as recent, I have them 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 lovely kisses, my grand kisses, I call them. Um, I'm so in love with them. But uh, professionally, um, community I serve is the African-American faith-based uh, community. That's a, a real passion of mine. I, I call myself a servant. I, I can serve in any capacity, but right now I think my main focus is this community. 
Um, this is a community I think that um, is not as well. I think this is the time for the local church, but the African American church, especially, um, we're seeing such a decline because I, and this is my opinion, because of lack of understanding. Um, for years, people didn't see results in churches, and then not to mention some of the things that have happened in churches. Um, so that's a community that has been passionate to me. My life got turned around years ago. I've seen some things happen spiritually, naturally. Mm -hmm. And so my life is where it is because of the faith-based community. But then I'm active in the African-American community, not that um, I'm against any other community. I just think there's a concentration that has been, I guess I have to have, personally, let me speak mm -hmm. for myself, towards this community because I see where I can fit to serve them. And I see where the pain is. I see where there's hurt. I see where people can benefit if things are done properly. So that's where I am right now, Karen. Okay. Well, um, so, so your audience is the African-American faith community. And yeah. um, it's really interesting that that is your audience in the time that we live in. And I wonder when I think about the pain points of that community, what do you believe, in your opinion, what are the most critical threats to the African-American faith community? And what are the ways that you work to counter those threats? I think if I had to say a threat, ooh, it'd probably be because um, this community doesn't know how to embrace what it doesn't endorse, uh, if I had to say it. Say um, that again, say that again. This community, we just have to learn how to embrace things we don't endorse. Um, for years, you know, we've been in church and we've been taught to don't, 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 don't. And Jesus really preached love. And so when we look at uh, this African-American church, we have to regain our thinking in the area of loving everybody, even mm. if you don't. I mean, we just saw things happen with the election. Um, so whether you were conservative, whether you were liberal, um, people pick sides and mm. then they just feel a way to hold other person, <laughs> you know, so if I'm a liberal, I don't have anything to know. Conservative, no, no, I don't care what you taught me in the past or what I learned from you and loved you. You suck now. So <laughs> I don't have anything to do with you. And so, okay, you might not endorse them, but there are other parts to this person. Uh, one of the big things that I notice is in our, in our community is if they see one part in the scripture, well, okay, You'll see in church, well, people are not, they're against gay marriages, but they discount the whole person. And I think that's hurting this community. It, it's, there's mm. no growth. And that's what Jesus is about, love. And so I think that's a big threat. And I think that's one of the reasons that I find that you see you know, people don't want to go to church. Um, they say there's no love in the church because we just don't know how to embrace things that we don't endorse. And I think if we change that, and that wasn't how Christ lived. Christ lived loving everybody, no matter where they were, what, how they lived. And we're supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to represent him here in his day and time. And so that's, that's my, my, my passion right now. Yeah. No, I like how you, how you um, phrase that. That's, that's mm -hmm. really interesting. Mm -hmm. How did you, so, you know, how did you get here to this place um, that you're espousing now and sharing with us, you know, what life experiences have you had that have led you to this point in time in your work? I was on the other side of that fence where I wasn't embraced. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I think even now within the church, you find that there's still, I think in any group or any community you have, you have these, you have a culture, you have these subcultures, you know? Um, so we're Christian. We all go to the same church. I like sports. You might not like sports. Um, okay. You might be in the sewing ministry. I might not. But then you'll, you'll find that even in churches or even in Christianity, you know, um, there's those divisions. And I didn't, I didn't like that. You know, you mm -hmm. go to certain meetings and um, so they got a group for the pastors and the ministers. There's a table just for them and everybody else. So even though they're preaching that, hey, we're all together, I'm a servant like you, it still appeared. You can't go near the pastor, can't touch them. Um, that, you know, it just appeared that there was a difference. Mm. And so folks didn't want to be a part of the church. And his thing, that's the thing that gives life, you know, that's the thing that helps change life. Wow. No, that's pretty good. And, and as you know, and um, you've heard me share a lot, you know, that I really believe that um, part of the power in community, when you get in these communities, um, 
a, a good community just embraces you and wraps their arms all around you mm -hmm. where you are for who you are for you know and they bring you along with the, <clears throat> the shared mission or the um the common goal of the the members in the group and when you have that kind of unity there is absolute power there mm -hmm. but for the individual it really makes a difference in um their perception of self you know mm -hmm. and identity formation and helping them to understand who they are as they move through life and work out their God-given talents and gifts and, and get ready to express themselves on the world. You know, mm -hmm. it's why, you know, the neighbors that are, that join us here on this, um, on this show are so important because behind them, you know, they have their own communities that they either lead or are part of. And um, it is a message that we need to spread and make most popular. Mm -hmm. uh, in that uh, we have to give attention to um, the individual and, and being grounded um, in the ways that you talk about, right? Those, uh, sep uh, those separations that appear to be separations in such a, a beloved community mm -hmm. are problematic, right? Yeah, and, and everyone wants to be loved, you know? Um, people are going through a lot right now. Yes. And um, we're dealing with the pandemic, um, social, social justice, uh, folks are hurting. They're really, really hurting. And people express pain in so many different ways. Yes. And so they don't scream out, I'm hurting. It comes out in anger. Uh, it comes out in um, sadness, depression. depression. We mm -hmm. see people's suicide rate is up. Um, and so we've, we've got to change that. We've got to be able to love people no matter what, where they are in life. Be able to care for people and yes. embrace them. And platforms like this helps, you know, because uh, it's allowing people to get, gain understanding. And mm -hmm. sometimes when you don't understand something, you know, that's, that becomes the problem. You know, we can gain understanding. Oh, yeah. I know who you are. I understand why you think the way you think. Uh, you don't have to think like I think. And we can still love one another and be respectful to one another, even though we might not see eye to eye. But if I can learn how to look at you in another light that we're all in this together, um, you have a piece, I have a piece, somebody else has a piece, and we can all move forward, especially mm -hmm. when, if you're in a community. Everybody has a part to play. Your part's not mine, my part's not yours. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. Um, so, you know, um, as a matter of fact, your brand, you have sort of a, 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 a mantra. Uh, mm -hmm. I love, I give, I serve. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that mean to you, and, and how does it inform the work that you do? Well, I got that from Jesus. You know, when you hear people say, Jesus came to die for our sins. Jesus came to, to save us from hell. Jesus came to do this. Jesus came, you know, there's so many different things. But when you look at what he really came to, um, he came to love the world. God said, I love the world so much that I gave you my son. So that was love. Um, giving his son was one. Love, give. And Jesus, when you look at Luke 22, Jesus said, hey, you guys are fighting about being in charge. The disciples were arguing about who's going to be in charge right in front of him. They said, well, Jesus just told them, hey, I'm about to die and I'm going to be offered up. And right in front of him, they start arguing about who's going to be the greatest. Well, I'm going to be in charge when he dies. <laughs> no, I'm going to be in charge. I'm the man, you know. He trusted me more than you. That's so trifling. So, <laughs> and Jesus said, y'all got it twisted, man. He said, I am here as a servant. He said, yeah, everybody else is looking who's going to be in charge. He said, no, I came here to serve the world. And you go back and you saw what he did. He gave up his life. He helped people. He loved people no matter where they were. Um, he didn't toss anybody away. Uh, and then he gave it, ultimately he gave his life so that we all can gain life. So I love, I give, I serve. And I put that on my little bands here to uh, remind me daily mm -hmm. that is what you do when you get in certain situations uh, are you loving, John? Are you giving right now? Are you serving right now? Especially when I feel upset about something. I have to remind myself uh, of that. And I have to do that all the time. It doesn't mm -hmm. just come naturally. Uh, but I have to remember that that's why I'm here. I'm not here to just try to gain things for myself. I'm here to give my life for other people. And as a result of doing that, I will gain my life. <laughs> you know what? I love that. And when we're talking about connection, mm -hmm. you know, communities, connect people mm -hmm. who if you are on the receiving end of being loved being given to and being served what what barrier is there going to be between you and that other person 
No. There, there will be no barrier, right? No. And um, as you shared, we're, we are living in a time where um, there is an attack on human connection, I believe, mm -hmm. on interpersonal connections. Mm -hmm. um, there's an attack on that. And we have to preserve our ability. Um, and, and it's the way that we're built. We are actually, that's why the show is called Built to Connect. <laughs> yeah. We are literally built to connect. There's yeah. nothing about any human on this planet that um, programs them to be an island unto themselves. Right. You know, we have our varying levels of um, introverts, extroverts, you know, mm -hmm. the life of the party versus, you know, uh, you know, library book reader or whatever. Mm -hmm. But no matter how far that pendulum swings, there are connections that individuals make that are necessary um, that just connect you to different parts of the human experience. Mm -hmm. um, Nothing's wrong with that. Everything's right about that. Right. And so I want to encourage people to open their minds or to open, yeah, wake up. Wake up. And look at the areas in our world that are coming to destroy connections and to pull those apart. There's a problem right there. Yeah. And my bet is, you know, um, since uh, there are no coincidences and, um, you know, all of us as creative beings have gifts and talents in us that, um, are to be used mm -hmm. to enhance the human experience, mm -hmm. we have the answers to those connections, you know. And I, I see you drinking your tea, and if you caught our promo earlier, I'm just gonna oh let me pause for a moment to uh, oh, wait, a wait a minute. <laughs> Look at you with your apple. You can't have tea without me having tea. I had to, I had to get on my team, and like, how come I only have a water bottle in Did the promo that the guest has a team? No, no, I said, no, I said, you get the Afro center cup, man. Uh, oh, oh. I know. It's look, artistic, artistic. I, look, there, there are people watching like, we did not take our time out to watch y'all sipping on tea. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go back and look at the six minute promo to get the, yeah. it's, it's a little internal joke. Yeah. But um, I'll, I'll ask you later what kind of tea you're drinking. Mm -hmm. You don't have some right now. So yeah. let, let me go into this. Um, <laughs> and I, but it's needed right now. Trust me. Right now, I need it. <laughs> oh, you need the tea right now? Yeah. Okay. And we're talking about real tea neighbors, not not the yeah. tea. Not the tea. Real tea. The yeah. kind you drink. <laughs> but maybe, uh, John Stevenson, you can give us the tea on this state of belief. Let me, let me read it again as you shared it with us. Mm -hmm. You believe that every person can reach a place of self-empowerment with renewed thinking, and you say it's really in five key areas of life. And those areas form the foundations of our life. Mm -hmm. Those areas are relationships, mm -hmm. education, finances, health, and spirituality. Mm -hmm. And I see we've got uh, Dr. Reba up here with us as well, who uh, talked to us about health and, and well-being um, several weeks ago. And she also talked about some of those, um, uh, those areas. You know, tell us about this belief and share a little bit with us um, more, because I think we could pick up the thread here, but how does this belief play out in your work and in the various communities of which you are a part? Uh, well, we all are built to relate. You know, I, I often say this, if I could live in this world um, without anybody talking to anybody, I'd be great. Um, I found out how patient I was not when I got married. I found <laughs> out, and when I had kids, you know, it's easy to say I'm patient, I'm a patient man. And get married, you realize you're not as patient as you think you are. <laughs> um, I'm a meek man. Yes, that's right. I'm, I'm pa Listen, I'm kind. I'm a kind guy. But sometimes that's the things that wasn't so kind. And so relationships help us develop. You know, mm -hmm. they help us become better people. So if you're a kind of person that's, I'm a recluse, I'm going to stay home. Uh, it's not always a good thing because you want to get better. So you can get better, but it, everybody has to be tested in every area. As in relationships, you find yourself tested. And when mm. you're tested, you see if you pass these tests, you know, and if you say something out of pocket to me, how am I going to respond? Am I going to respond by being kind? Am I going to respond uh, by, you know, because we got nonverbals, you know, you know, I'm rolling my eyes, sucking my teeth, and my, how am I, you know, <laughs> how am I doing what I'm doing? I want to become a better human being for society. So in order for that to happen, then I have to be in relationships. And I can't be in the relationships, all the relationships that are all perfect. I would love to, to have that because my life would be so much peaceful. But peace is not something that anybody gives me. Peace is something that I have that I give to other people. Mm. So I have to make sure that I'm in a place. 
that <clears throat> when something comes up that is not so pleasant, friendly, um, or I got to forgive, you know, um, I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it from a heart perspective. Finances, everybody deals with money. I believe that uh, in schools, they need to put more concentration on finances. Yes, agree. Uh, that is something that everybody has to deal with eventually in their lives. So, you know, um, there's certain things that I learned in school that I don't even touch now in life. But if somebody gave me a budgeting class when I was younger, if somebody had taught me how to invest when I was younger, if somebody taught me how money is like a currency and moves and those different things, um, how much better could I have been? So I believe in those areas. Somebody has to establish some things um, to help people with their finances and to understand how finances, how money. You know, my mom used to always say money don't grow on trees, but it can grow if you plant it in the right places. Mm. So, nobody's ever told me that. So I had to realize certain things spiritually and find that out. Uh, so I learned a, a lot of different things. Health, <clears throat> you know, um, we've got a friend, a, a friend in common, Bryant. He's enlightened me so much um, with my health. I'm watching his journey. And there's things that you knew. Uh, and there's other people, even my sister, you know, she, she said many things for years. And then the older I got, I realized, okay, you can't just sit around and eat this kind of stuff and not move. <laughs> and, and then uh, how many times can you eat this? And then even when, that, again, relationships, even with Bryant, we were out for uh, my 50th birthday, remember? And I don't know if Bryant, Bryant said this at the table. He said, I, I, he said, if I'm going to eat, I know I'm going to eat a dessert. I'm not going to eat this, this piece of bread. So he was doing the calculations of his intake of carbs. I was like, dang, that's tight. So I started taking that and I started putting that in my life. And I realized, especially for African-American men, there's certain things you can avoid if you're eating right. Mm. And you're taking care of your body. Mm -hmm. So we all say we want to live longer, but are we doing those things to live longer? Right. Spirituality, that speaks for itself. I, you know, I'm pastor and I'm, I love people. I believe there's a difference between living a spirit-led life, a Christ-led life, and religion. And I think for many years, people have gone to church, and it was just about religion, the do's and the don'ts, the do's and the don'ts, the do's and the don'ts. And uh, who wants a bunch of rules? You know, I mean, we got to have them. We know that. But I don't attract you with rules. I attract you. I attract you with love. Mm. And so uh, when you're telling people, you know, when I first was, I needed to rededicate my life back to Christ, I heard people give me a bunch of rules. Well, yeah, that makes me want to rush to church. <laughs> <laughs> put, put shackles on me and make me, you know, because I felt like I was free, but I really wasn't free. Wow, but, but then when I, I began to get some understanding and, and understand what the Bible really was talking about, it was about a relationship with Christ, um, then my life shifted. And then I started seeing something different. Then mm -hmm. it was almost like somebody took the shades off and turned the lights on. I was able to experience life on a whole nother level. And I was able to share that with other people. And so I can go, go on and on and on. I don't want to take over my time talking about that. I missed one, didn't I? Education. Education. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, as a teacher, um, I'm sorry. Uh, as a teacher, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, you and I talked about this. Um, education comes in many forms. And when I was younger, people really hyped up, you know, go to college. And I understood, yeah, go to college, go to college, you know. And uh, But I, I'm seeing you go to get college is not for everybody. But people can be educated in so many different ways. And so um, the Bible said my people perish because of lack of knowledge. So at some point, you need to be growing and being educated. And, um, you know, I was well educated in television because that's what I had. I could tell you that television guy back and forth. Boy, I knew what was coming on, when it was coming on, who was starring in it and all that good stuff because that was what I love. But I think if mm -hmm. you can take a child and you can find what they love and you can mentor them in that area, um, education becomes easy because they'll want to know more. Yes. They'll want to grow. And I don't know that um, that happens in our community a whole lot, but I think it's changing. I'm seeing a lot of changes that I'm excited about in the African-American community uh, and the faith-based community. I'm seeing a lot of churches are adding certain things where there's education. And so I believe that, you know, if you can be educated in wherever your passion is, you can be an auto mechanic, you can be in the child care, you can um, be a consultant, wherever your passion is, get educated, know it in and out. And uh, so I help with that. I want to help people with um, in the areas of how they get themselves educated. And sometimes yep. people think, well, I'm not a good reader. 
stop limiting yourself. There's many other ways you can educate yourself without reading. Yes, reading is fundamental. But don't say because I don't read well is why I can't educate, educate myself. That is not true. There's too many outlets now today that you can educate yourself without picking up a book. I love audiobooks. I love them because I'm always on the go. So I'm always giving myself some kind of education somewhere with an audio book. Right. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really good. Um, uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts about those five areas that, that form every foundation, uh, the foundation of our lives. But, you know, I think you made an important connection that you didn't necessarily land on. But interesting, because um, I always feel that you have a unique um, perspective about the intersection of um, uh, maybe activism, social activism, activism and spirituality or the church, you know, and what you talked about, um, you know, you don't advocate that we just bl blindly follow the, the do's and don'ts. You know, like you said, nobody is attracted by a bunch of rules, but you're attracted by relationship. You're attracted by love, that sort of thing. But it's interesting. And, and, and one of the challenges in the community that you serve is sort of a, I don't want to say it too harshly, but sometimes there's just a blind following of tradition without a full understanding of the knowledge behind it. And then also without the action, mm -hmm. right? You just kind of lean on the tradition and hoping that the tradition will work for you. The same way with um, education is that there's, there's sort of a traditional belief about it that if you just go K through 12 and then go to college, that everything is all right. No, I mean, mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. actively involve yourself and actively engage in the crafting of your life whether it's through that education lens or through that spirituality lens, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's um, a lesson that, um, I think we need to talk a little more loudly mm -hmm. about that in faith-based yeah. communities. How's that sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta talk a little more loudly about it. Okay, let, let, me, let me dig into a, a little of a more serious um, topic here. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, we are, we are living through a pandemic, mm -hmm. you know? Who'd have thought? You know, we would say that, right? Um, mm -hmm. But we're living through a pandemic, COVID. And we're also experiencing a resurgence, um, a, a resurging pandemic of racial injustice and white supremacy in our country. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, um, how have these um, dual, I, I wish they dueling pandemics. I don't think they're dueling, but um, you know, dual pandemics happen occurring at the same time. How have these pandemics impacted you personally and professionally? Well, <clears throat> this social justice, I mean, you're opening up a Pandora box for me. Um, I've had conversations online with um, certain Caucasian men who don't see it. <clears throat> and it's, and I feel like I engage those conversations, not that I'm trying to convince them of anything, more so for those who are watching our conversation and how to have these conversations. You know, um, any great change we've had uh, with civil rights was concerned, it started with the church. It started with a man of God. It started, I mean, look at Jesus. It started with a man of God who really said, hey, and then we got policy behind it. Um, and right now, I think we're in that same space. There are things that are going on, have been going on for years, and they just haven't really been addressed. Of course, with the murder of George Floyd, um, we saw a lot. And what made me overjoyed was I was a part of a protest where I saw, oh my goodness, Black, white, Asian, Hindu, all religions, color, races, genders came together to say, this is wrong, this is not right. But there is a, a, a research, we're seeing it as subtle as it is. We see the little things going on in Georgia where they're, you know, suppressing voter rights. And, um, and then, you know, if, if it doesn't get big media, we don't scream about it, it will go on. And those small little things that are going on are keeping, keeping things from moving forward. Let me just be nice about it. <laughs> it's keeping things from moving forward. And here's why we, as African Americans, have to be unified. Because if we, there's power in unity. And the Bible talks about agreement. And so we can agree that something's not right. But our approach has to be very strategic to change it. 
we have to get out and vote. We have to get educated in who's who's mm -hmm. in office and who who they're putting in offices and what they're doing. Um, stop being Facebook lawyers where it comes down to um, police encounters. You know, I got a lot of young guys that well they think they know the law because they saw it on Facebook. But does that apply mm -hmm. in your state? So I'm working diligently at making sure that we know the laws in our state. What's right? What's not right? Mm -hmm. Holding police accountable for what we paid them to do. They're civil servants. And so how are you serving me by killing me? You know, and we can say what you want about the numbers. And I've gone back and forth with my our counterparts about these numbers. And you've got skewed numbers. There's more white people. So you can't go, well, white people, there's more white people can't. Well, look at that numbers. <laughs> it's almost like common sense. It's common sense to me. So, okay, just what I said earlier. I got to love you. So you understand. But if you don't want to get involved and help us, then move out the way. Stop hindering us. But because there's such an agreement inside of, certain people that I have conversation with, I'm not going to be a sweeping broom here, sure. um, that there's nothing wrong. There's a scripture in Jeremiah 8, 11. It says, um, how can we basically, I'm going to paraphrase it, say there's nothing wrong. And we put band-aids over the wounds and say, there's nothing wrong. Everything's okay. And we just ignore the problems mm. that are going on. Mm. And I think that's what happens. Uh, and that's what's happening today. And if we don't do something and what is my push is that I realized my children were going through things that I went through when I was younger, but it became common, Karen. They didn't even tell Karen, my wife, my wife's name is Karen too. They didn't even tell us that they were dealing with things with police. It's like, oh yeah, they put us over all the time. What do you mean all the time? Yeah, it was a bunch of the car and then we got to get out. We got to get on the ground. And it was common. Mm. That hurt. Yeah. And it made me angry at the same time. And I had one gentleman tell me, he said, well, you all commit more crimes, so they might happen upon somebody getting ready to do something, and that will save a life. I said, that is racism. And he couldn't see it. I'm like, yeah, it is, sir. Sir, you are racist because you feel like we commit more crimes, so we should be pulled over. So I'm on my way to church. I'm on my way to the airport. It's right for an officer to pull me over just in case. I'm about to do something wrong. That's got to change. So I'm not, you know, hearts have to change first. But let's put some things in place where that is, that's illegal. You can't do that. You can't profile me. And so that's why I'm in this thing right now with this activism. I want to change it where the police reform is, especially where, um, and I do, I'm, I'm in the Citizens Academy mm -hmm. to learn more about what's going on in our police departments. Um, so I'm educating myself there. And I'm making connections. And there are many good police officers that I know. But I need the good ones to help us with the bad ones. Mm. Yeah, you know, um, it, it is painful to, you know, hear you share, you know, the experience that, that your, your kids have had. Um, you know, um, for some of us that grew up in the, you know, I, I would say that I grew up in the 80s, you know, and there really was some semblance of, you know, I, you know, as also as a student of history, like, you know, I love history. I love to read, you know, um, you know, I'm a, you know, I, you know, I'm a nerd. I, I love to read. I love to learn, you know, you know, there's nothing, nothing nerdy about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> nothing nerdy about that. But, but I love it. So, um, you know, as a student of history, I remember thinking, you know, reading about certain encounters and, you know, studying the, the civil rights era in our country and thinking, Ooh, yeah, you know, uh, I can't believe people actually lived like that back in the day and I could never, or they would never have done this to me. And, you know, just really making strong statements about the past because that was over because here we are in the eighties, you know, we've got, you know, you know, Run DNC and Aerosmith walking this way and, you know, we are together. We're just people. We're, we're, we're unified now. We're good music, <laughs> right? Um, and um, I was so shocked as I continue to grow and live and watching the, the life trajectory of my high school classmates. Mm -hmm. And we, I, like, I'm really shocked to see where we have gone. That unity that I, that I thought was there and, and was there for that time of our lives. 
But if you follow us all out, you know, we've all hit a, a milestone uh, birthday this year. Never you mind which one, but it's a milestone. And it is crazy to see, you know, the, the top ranked students, you know, um, in our senior year and, you know, where we went and where we live and what beliefs we're now espousing on social media. And like, I, I, I'm just so totally shocked. And what it reminds me of is, you know, we as humans, the human family, that includes all of us, right? And every, all the different, what we call races, right? Mm -hmm. We have to connect and live together peace, peacefully, right? Mm -hmm. However, we have to recognize that human beings have created a system that subjugates others for the sake of power and have created a system on superficial means or matter, such as skin color, which is random, right? Mm -hmm. to, to then say that you are less than me, so mm -hmm. that I can have more, so that I can be more, so I can be viewed as more on the world scene, right? Mm -hmm. So race is a social construct. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. At a, nope. at a DNA cellular level, cellular level mm -hmm. me and my white girlfriend might be uh, 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 more similar than you and I who look similar, right? Uh, you know, race is a social construct, but racism is very real because mm -hmm. humans created it. And again, power, greed, subjugation. Mm -hmm. So as, and it, as and, crazy and, 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 and you know, and you know what I believe too, Karen? Uh -huh. I believe that, that racism, though I love your definition, yes, it strives through inaction people not doing anything, saying, well, there's nothing wrong. I don't know it exists. So that is just as dangerous as you saying, I can't stand you because of your skin color. I can't stand you because of this. But to sit back and to say, oh, there's nothing wrong. All is well and all is not well. Yeah. I, I think it strives through an action too. Yeah. But because of the insidious way that it's set up, there is an entire population of people who are alarmed right now Mm -hmm. You know, um, our white neighbors are alarmed because they may not be able to see it mm -hmm. because they've benefited from it. It's just a way of life. Mm -hmm. The same way that it is for, for our, our black neighbors, that there's certain things that we have accepted, mm -hmm. not that because it's right or true, but we've accepted because we've been socialized into it. Right. Mm -hmm. But that thing was created. We mm -hmm. can we can deconstruct that entire thing. We can, sure can. take that down and we can start over. And what I, uh, what I also heard and what you were sharing with us, there's a saying about among the rich, right? There's a saying among the rich that it takes um, one generation to build the wealth or to gain the wealth. Mm -hmm. That next generation enjoys the wealth and that third generation is the one that could spend it all up, mm -hmm. right? So there's this idea that you've gotta be mindful of how your wealth passes down so that the third generation person does not live without the knowledge of the struggle that it took for first generation to gain, gain mm -hmm. that wealth mm -hmm. so that the family lineage doesn't lose it. Right. Okay. So it makes me think about sort of how proud I am of the, I'm generation X, gen X, of the generations coming behind us who are really teaching me quite a bit about this approach to um, social justice. And they're standing up and saying, oh, 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 that's not true. No, mm -hmm. because here's the source. You know, that's not true. Here's the truth. Let's teach the truth. Let's yeah. live in the truth and let's figure it out together, you know. And since this information has existed all these decades long, but as you said, through an action, nobody's, you know, nobody's digging in this to, to, to create an upheaval of life as we know it. Mm -hmm. You know, the burden is on you to get the knowledge and let's, let's enact it together. But it's no longer, you know, I, as a black person, no longer going to carry it on my back, so to speak, right. um, carry that weight on my back because we're all human. We're all equal. Mm -hmm. And each of us have a responsibility to engage with the human experience and to make it better for all of us. You know, well, I am that, really proud. We, only, we, we, need, we need to all do our part. And I think that that comes down to us as African-Americans as well. You know, we're like, well, it's not a big deal. It ain't my house. It's not happening with me. If it, it is, if it's happening to one, it's happening to all. So there's a part you can play. And the more we're getting to, again, I'm going Bible now, these end times, 
we're seeing more things come out. I just don't want to see any more of us die. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't have to happen. It's happened so long. We're we're looking at the ones that are publicized, but there's so many African American men and women that have died at the hands of police or incarcerated, you know, just for minor infractions. It's and that's to me in a sense murder. You're stealing a generation. I, this father can't be home to raise his kids and love his kids as a father. So we miss that example in the home. We miss all this stuff. And then the cycle continues. And so we have to do something different. We, yeah. We're... No, I absolutely agree. And it's important also that we make sure that we're explaining, like, so-and-so wasn't murdered because of the color of their skin. Mm -hmm. They were murdered because of a racist system mm -hmm. and structure that exists in this country that makes that so. It's not because, mm -hmm. you know, who you are and what you look like and how you were birthed into the world, that's mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. That is perfect, right? Yeah. So a structure that denigrates you and slots you according mm -hmm. to that, um, just for you know, the benefit of others, that's evil. You know, mm -hmm. and it's important to teach our kids that so that they don't assign that evilness to themselves as some sort of inherent moral deficit. That's mm -hmm. that's insidious and that's so important that we don't do that. I, I did that. We first moved from New York. Uh, I had my wife, my sister and I, we had a certain pride in ourselves because my mother put in us, you know, you're black, black people are beautiful. When we came to Maryland, everything around us, even black people said, because we were darker, we were ugly. Um, our hair wasn't, because, you know, we say, oh, she got good hair. You don't have good hair. You got nappy hair. Um, your nose is bigger. See, and then they downgraded Africa, but where'd they get that from? You know, mm -hmm. so there was no self-love. And I saw a difference in the culture here, black people, than I saw in New York City. Mm -hmm. And so when we came here, then we felt as young, young, we felt there was something wrong with us. Right. And we didn't have any pride in ourselves. So we're growing up living like we are, we were born with something wrong with us. And even in certain churches, they taught you that, well, Kush was black. He was cursed by God. We were miseducated in these areas. Miseducated, right. And so now you're living life with a chip on your shoulder little anger like why was I born this color how come my nose couldn't have been thinner how come my hair couldn't have been straighter you know I'm now behind the curve I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm never gonna I can't change these are things I can't change until you get educated and understand that whoa wait a minute they lied to me even the black people that were in our community lied to me <laughs> you know so yeah um that's what I want to I want to be about as well is about ch telling the beautiful black babies you are beautiful as yes. you are Yes. You are wonderful. Your skin is beautiful. Your hair is beautiful. All of you is beautiful because God made you no matter where you are. If you got straight hair, that's beautiful. It doesn't matter what, you know, these constructs, like you said, people, it depends on where you are and how people mm -hmm. view it. So absolutely, um, I'm striving to change the thinking of folks. Yes, absolutely. Um, I see that Cala 4124 says, it's hard to identify privilege when it's presented. Um, as the standard that, and it's all you've ever experienced. And that goes both way. So mm -hmm. for our white neighbors, you know, that's, that's the standard. And so this, mm -hmm. can you imagine, can you imagine putting yourselves in their shoes with the, with what's happening now, with the reckoning that our black neighbors are holding the world accountable for now? Mm -hmm. It's got to be real mm -hmm. unsettling, right? It's got to be terrifying. Yeah. It's got to be terrifying. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you're being robbed. Like something being taken from me. Yeah, right, 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 right. Nothing's being taken. Well, That's well, yeah, your, your 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 privilege is, <laughs> you know, but right. That's where you, know, you get that rhetoric. Take, right. We're not trying to steal anything out of your household. Just give me a fair shake. Right, and then and then the other side with our black neighbors, as you just said, you know, the thinking, the mindset, because of how you were uh, you were presented. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to listen to a podcast. I. Um, uh, was a guest on recently, but I shared about how, you know, growing up, you know, and you like music and you like celebrities, but you go pick up a local magazine and there's nobody that looked like me. Oh, and so there's this yeah. weird absence of people that look like me in the public square, in these public spaces that 
society deems as important. So what is that message to me as a young girl? Mm -hmm. That I don't exist, mm -hmm. that I don't matter, that, uh, that you know, I need to do whatever I can to contort and morph myself into what I see in those teen magazines because clearly that must be you know, the mm -hmm. end goal because that's all that's out there. That is evil. It is evil. <laughs> it's evil. It is. Even if it's unintended evil, we need to know and understand the impact that generations, generations of um, black and brown children have gone through and it has impacted their sense of self, their identity, um, and the quality of the communities that they're part of. Mm -hmm. It just has, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, and so I, I appreciate I, you. I, I will say, I'm, I am glad to see what, I, what you, when you mentioned the younger generation, coming behind us, the Generation yeah. Zs, man, they're doing a great job. They are in this yes. grind and they're serious and you are not pulling the wool over their eyes. Yes. Um, yeah, man, yes. I love it. I love the fire. I'm proud of their sophistication and I am learning and unlearning a lot as yeah. a result Ooh. of their action and their in, and their community engagement. You better I really preach, know. girl. So I'm, I'm grateful for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're, we're winding down our conversation here. And, um, you know, I just have a, a couple more questions for you, you know, because we know, as I shared, you know, um, community uh, is about the power of connection, right? Mm -hmm. And so I wondered, um, you know, what, what's the impact of your work? What, what's the, the fruit of the labor that you've seen um, with the work that you've been able to do? Right now, um, I'm seeing, well, one person, me. <laughs> so... I'm seeing the more that I'm getting involved with uh, working with the police, you know, and hats off to these good officers that are out here doing what they do daily. Yeah. They're doing an excellent job. But one of the things that I am noticing, um, I'm working with another gentleman. He's a police officer and he's getting involved with some youth. So he said, hey, man, we've got reports of these youth doing this, this and that. He said, let's just go knock on their doors and let's talk to them. Um and just, you know, be there and offer, let's connect them. So I'm seeing a connection to some of the young adults and the youth that are having some challenges at home and in school, um, that have been in trouble with the police, being connected to different areas in the county and resources in our county mm -hmm. um, to get assistance. Um, Education-wise, um, folks learning different different aspects of uh, what's going on, what's real, what the law really is. And right now, as I'm in the Citizens Academy, I've learned so much. Mm. And so I can't wait to get out and kind of filter it out into our communities. There's a lot that are going, that's going on that um, our communities don't know, right? In your local county, there's so much. So if you can get out of those walls. And so one of the things mm. we want to do is we want to get some of these youth out of, when I was on the radio, I interviewed a gentleman named C.J. Blair. And he said, there are kids that have grown up with and uh, they don't leave within two blocks of their home. Wow. He said, so from the time they're born to they're 18, 19, they don't even leave within a two block radius. He said, and they don't know that, they know the White House is there, but they've never been out, there, out of the hood to see it. Mm -hmm. and so some of the kids um, need to experience more. Exposure, yeah. Yeah, we can get them to experience more to broaden their, their thinking and their hearts. So um, I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> Absolutely. Oh, that's good. You know, one of my uh, passions is travel, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, I do consider myself a world traveler, and I am convinced um, if you travel mm -hmm. and you um, get yourself beyond the, the tourist areas where you travel, it is so hard to hate people. It is mm -hmm. so hard to hate other people because you can get outside of yourself, and Americans are notoriously, you know, we're we're self-centered. Let's just, let's just yeah, say it. It, we, we are, are self-centered and uh, you know, wherever you go, they know you're American real, real quick, <laughs> just because of, you know, the way that um, we would traditionally vibe in other places around the globe. But it is hard to hate another human person when you get to know, get to see uh, different peoples, different cultures, different languages, how folks live, what they value, you know, mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. is, it is, just, you have to work hard to hate. Yeah. You have to work hard to hate. Mm -hmm. and we don't even come to this planet hating folks nope. that's another topic for another another show I don't, yeah. don't want to go down that rabbit trail but <laughs> I, I just like to get that in there um, and so it sounds like you've learned a lot about yourself mm -hmm. um, in your journey um, in, in the different communities that you're a part of um, 
Are there any lessons that you've learned about people in your effort to build, inform, and empower the community that you serve? Uh, repeat that again. Have you learned any, what lessons have you learned about people in your efforts to build, inform, and empower the community that you, you serve? Any truths about people? What have you learned? I have learned, I guess, and this is not just something recent. <clears throat> I, I've learned that all people pretty much are good for the most part. Mm. Um, there's a root to why people think, to why, why they think the way they do. And so for the most part, if you can, I have a, a friend named Daryl Davis, and he's made uh, developed relationships with Klansmen. And they have actually, he's African-American, he's a musician, they've given him the, the grand wizard robes, their robes and stuff. And he just did what I said. He just embraced them, became friends with them. He learned about why they feel the way they feel. And there's a root to everybody. There's, there's some kind of pain or fear at the root of why people do what they do. Wow. And if you, if you can get to that root there mm -hmm. and love people through that, love conquers hate all the time. And, every uh, time the, yeah, yeah dr martin luther king taught us that because it didn't make any sense that's why i know he was called of god because who can step out and say we need to have change here and we're going to do it non-violently that didn't make a lick of sense <laughs> but when, so when does anything god tell us to do make sense you know <laughs> you know so he steps out and he leads us into civil rights and so Again, like I said earlier, it always took some kind of man of God with a call to start these changes. Yeah. And, and I'm going to change your man of God to person of God because uh, we oh. all know, I mean, you know, Moment. I, I got to, yeah. you know, because I, I got to yeah. see myself in it. And we, yes. thankfully, we know all of the people. <laughs> Wait, maybe, maybe this is a good time to, to sip the tea for real life. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I've been trying not to, I've been trying not to do that. I'm like, person of yeah. God, people of God, right? But we know that there were um, a, a variety of uh, good folks who were uh, on the front lines of ushering civil rights, what we call the civil rights movement. But we know that civil rights have been fought for for a long, long time. But I, I do get your point. But I wanted to, I wanted to squeeze that in there. Please help a brother out. Yes, yes, sir. Well, look for uh, this is your last question before our little quick lightning question round, <laughs> uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> which I'm looking forward to. But you know. So there are, that's right. I, I see that uh, my sister is talking about a variety yeah. of ethnicities as well. Yeah, yeah. It is. what I love, what I love, if you take the time to look and study the civil rights um, movement and era in, um, in America, in, U in the US, uh, anybody will be able to find somebody who looks like them, mm -hmm. who's, you know, part of them, who was part of that movement. Mm -hmm. We understand why there needed to be a figurehead, there needed to be a a, a leader, we, we get all of that, you know, but um, I like that quite a bit. I do like that quite a bit. Um, and I do see that um, the folks that we are seeing come up behind us right now, taking on this new resurgence, you know, mm -hmm. that they um, are um, being very inclusive as well, which is important because once again, I said, hey, people are people. Each and every one of us are valuable. We're here, created beings for a purpose. We have gifts, talents um uh to bring to bear that benefit the human experience and our associations with other humans it is what helps us identify those gifts and develop them and grow them so that they can get to a place that it will benefit the world scene i heard you share a little bit of that when you talked about those the five elements of the foundations of life but it's in relationship where you where you grow right where you rub yeah. up against something and you and you develop so um i truly believe that to my core so we have some neighbors join us here on this live tonight but you know thousands of people will see this live um now and into the future in replay and i wonder what your message would be to the neighbors that join us here like i said it earlier um embracing things that you don't endorse um if we can learn how to truly love people for who they are, not just what they do or what they are aspiring to do, mm -hmm. um, just love them for just who they are. People need to be loved. And love is not something, it's something you give away. 
Love is kindness, it's peace, it's gentleness, it's meekness, all those things we define scripturally in Galatians. But it's those are things you give away. I give you my patience. I give you long suffering. Wow. I give you temperance. I mm -hmm. give you meekness. Those are things I give you. And sometimes you have to give those things in spite of how you feel. And, and it's easy to give somebody something when everything's all hunky dory and rosy and good. <laughs> but I got to give you forgiveness when you did me wrong. I got to forgive you when you took something from me that belonged to me. And I got to forgive you when you've cussed me out. I've got to, I got to be patient with you. Uh, we, we see this with the younger generation. We have to be patient with them. There are certain things they don't have in wisdom and we've got to be patient because they're eager to go and we love that fire, but it's like, okay, wait a minute, let's do it with some, with some wisdom here. <laughs> right. So, so um, those are things that you had to give away. Love it. I love it. Um, right before we hit our um, sort of lightning round of questions, um, where can we find you on your social media platforms? Oh, John Inspires 247. Uh, I'm on John Inspires 247, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, that's where I am. John Inspires 247. Fantastic. And we'll, we'll type that into the comments as well so folks can, um, um, if they're not already following you, make sure that you head over to his IG to give them Oh, a also website, jsmonline.org. That That's right. That is the nonprofit. Um, you can help and donate, help to the cause of things that we're doing. Um, we're starting that Vision for Change I Church coming up. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for that for the Wednesday Bible Studies. And we do Conversation at the Wall where we have guests. And we have people right here at the wall. Well, it's online, but I'm at the wall. I love that. Yeah, I love that. <clears throat> I then, love that um, wall thing. Yeah. And then the uh, I love I give I serve dot com. That's where we have uh, the coaching and the other things, uh, radio broadcast, podcast, those kind of things. Fantastic. That is awesome. Thank you. And we're uh, making sure that we get that information in in the chat. Okay. So, final questions. Uh -huh. Here we go. Community is unity. Community is unity. Okay. When you walk into a room full of people you do not know, what is the very first thing you do? Oh, that depends on if it's uh, networking. I don't know. I'll go walk into a room with people. I, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if I walk in a room with people I don't know, I introduce myself to people. If I'm coming to a table or something, you know, uh -huh. how you doing? My name is John. I, that's the first thing I do. But if it's a room of people I don't know, I don't know. I find somebody to speak to, I guess. You know, that's so you, me. You start talking. You start talking. Yeah. You start introducing yourself. Yeah. What are you trying to say? <laughs> Yes, I do. I'm, I'm just saying that makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you start talking. Okay. Um, who is your favorite author and why? <laughs> um, John Stevenson. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, we were supposed to talk about that. What? Okay, author, tell us. Um, we need the name of your book and... I'm assuming we can find them on either, find and purchase them on either oh of these platforms. Is that right? That we're posting in the chat? There we go. <laughs> Which I can't see from the comments. Let's see. It's Servanthood to Purpose. Servanthood to Purpose. Yes. Teaching people that everything you're going through at this particular point in time in your life is training for where God's taking you. Uh -huh. So don't uh, forsake if you're, I told, I used to tell my sons this a long time ago. Man, if my hindsight could be your foresight, you'd be great. Wow. But yeah, you know, servanthood to purpose. If you can understand that the things you're going through in your job, wherever you are, is training for the greater thing God has for you. So that book is for that. And then a hard to serve. Yes. Is a book that you helped me with, and we put that out about there's several areas that you can develop in church of how you got a heart to serve in the local church. Everybody is called to a local church and should be serving somewhere in some capacity in the local church. Okay, you don't have that one to show? No, oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, there you go. Hard to serve. So um, both those books can be purchased through Amazon and on your platforms, right? Yes, yeah, so go to the website, you can catch it on uh, I Love I Give I Serve or jsmonline.org. And Amazon. Okay. okay, love it. All right, so what's an unexpected thing that happened to you just because you were connected to someone? Oh, my God. Um, Sean Perry, Radio One. I uh, met him in a 
fire house subs and he asked me if um he said he said i heard you speak before man i've been to the church he said are you doing anything for seniors i have a radio show with seniors um and so are you doing anything for seniors I said, actually yeah my wife and i are planning to serve a community right down the street from us he said well why don't you come on my radio show and i'll interview you uh from that moment um, being interviewed by Sean. I served him from there, made a pitch to Radio One, had a radio show, uh, met so many notable people, red carpet affairs. I've got relations that I have to this day, been on national television shows from right. meeting one person in a firehouse sub. Powerful connection, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. If community were a song, what would that song be? Hmm. God knows. I, I don't want to say we are the world because as much as I like that because Michael Jackson did, it's corny to say that right now. <laughs> um, Caravan of Love by Isley, Isley Jasper and Isley. Uh, how's that Love go? Train, Love Train OJs. Which one? Which one? All three songs? Which one? Love Train. OJ. Love Train. How's that go? Nah, man. You ain't getting me to do that. <laughs> yeah. Love Train. And why? Why Love Train? Because um, the OJ, you know, it was in the 70s. And the time that they put that song out, there was a, a heightened racial issue in, in America in the 70s. And Love Train, you know, it, it was like a, you know, people thought it was a disco song because people, their next stop, you know, is Africa and all that, you know, they were saying that, man. And so they were going through all the countries that you would go through because hey, that Love Train doesn't mean just the United States, it means everybody. So, you know, and then I think about the Afros and them doing the little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Love Train, Love Train it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, God, I wish that you would give me these questions ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> that's, you got another one? This is the last one. You ready for it? I don't know. Let's see. Avengers or Thanos, and why? Oh! Shannon? I think you did that one. Uh, okay. I told her yesterday that I like Thanos. Shannon had this look on her face when I said it like, I know, I know you kidding. Yes. <laughs> Here's You're like, why. I know. I love the Avengers. I love all of that Marvel. We saw Black Widow yesterday, everybody. And we had a good time. But I, I revealed to my Marvel-loving family that <laughs> I just like Thanos because of his mind. It was sinister. Yes, it was. <laughs> but he was a genius. And God, he was... He was Look at Tina said, who? <laughs> Don't worry about it, Tina. Don't worry about it. Shannon said, blasphemy. <laughs> yes, Thanos was a, 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 a evil genius. And he just, who thinks of, I'm going to take over it and change the world and kill off society and almost do it, you know? And so, I mean, yes. Yeah, yes, he was the bad guy. But remember when Hulk was fighting him, boy, he be hard. And his, thank you, thank you. See, that, that's awesome. What I'm talking about. I can respect that. Yes, he wanted to disappear half a population. He did. That was evil and demonic. Yes, it was. But what I, what I loved about Thanos was that, man, you couldn't stop him. He had that tenacity. He was going for his goal, man. I'm like, this dude is off the team. Now think about it. Let's flip it. If we could have flipped him to be the good guy, ah, oh. <laughs> Brian, I know you just can't. Brian, you have to admit, I thought Hawk said, "Oh, Hawk got it right in the beginning." Man, <laughs> the mom said, "Let him have his fun." And Thanos put it on the Hulk. He picked him up, slap. I was like, "Oh my God!" Not only was he genius, he was physically fit, man, and and he had a plan. Oh. I am inevitable. <laughs> that well that was a powerful that that is someone who believes in themselves um <laughs> powerful sense of self <laughs> yes well um 
you know, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, bro. And I don't know what, that's the part I like about him. You're right. I wouldn't kill my own daughter. I wouldn't do none of that stuff. But it's like, okay, could we find a good person like him from Titan? You know, it's got to be, you know. <laughs> so I just, I like Thanos. You know, I'm going to go ahead and end this travesty right now. <laughs> before you dig yourself into more trouble. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Shannon there. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna admit to the great movie line. Um, mm -hmm. However, his actions, you know, made Hulk reclusive for what? The next two movies, I, you know, Hulk like would not come back. Like, yeah. that's a problem. He shut the so, Hulk down, didn't he? <laughs> and, you, and look at you, you're laughing about that. I Poor know, Hulk. I mean, Hulk was Poor. the man and I loved the Hulk until that. I was like, the Hulk is the man now, so I'm like, Man, he, he got to the whole soul. He would even come out. Anyway. Well, despite your response to that, that last question, John Stevenson, it has been a pleasure uh, chatting with you today. Thank you so much again for coming on to um, <laughs> uh, Build to Connect with me, Karen Bryant, where we talk about all things community, talk about communities that matter, and I appreciate all the neighbors that have been able to join us. Um, today um powerful conversation and i'm sure we'll we'll find our way back to the space again in the near future <laughs> yes see, see, you, you're still tickled by that panels thing yes Thanos i am i am maybe we'll have to do a whole marvel comics universe you know session um mm -hmm. so that we can set you straight <laughs> <laughs> okay then my next one was black panther that's my number one guy of well, course, no, I'm gonna, I want to stop you because I don't want you to start mixing these feelings and things together. We're going to stop right there with your uh, advocation for Thanos. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to let the people decide. <laughs> yes, that? yes. Someone <laughs> is suggesting I'm going to need to edit this recording. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cali 4124, I'm so glad you joined as well, mm -hmm. as well as the rest of our neighbors. Thank you all so much for being here with me and with us and i'll see you in a in a couple weeks with um our next guest all right until then be great everybody make sure you're engaged in your communities and bring the value you bring it with you wherever you go have a great evening everyone bye, -bye everybody thank you <laughs> bye